Hello and welcome to this Azure Back to School presentation on Azure Sentinel. I'm going to cover how you can modernize your security operations with Azure Sentinel over the next 15 to 20 minutes. My name is Ed Baker. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer and a regional lead for the UK. I'm also a Microsoft most valuable professional in the enterprise mobility area, particularly Microsoft Intune. It can't have escaped your notice that today organizations are faced with a very difficult task of trying to protect their expanded digital estate from increasing cyber threats. The move to the cloud and a mobile workforce have pushed the border of your estate beyond the boundary of your physical network. Your data and users and systems are everywhere. Meanwhile, the frequency and sophistication of attacks are growing. Regardless of the size of your organization or the industry, you are a target. It's a challenge we all struggle with in IT security. This expanding estate creates significant challenges for your security operations teams. They're the ones tasked with defending this estate. As it grows, so does the volume of security data. 76% of organizations report an increase and much of it's coming from the cloud. So pumping all of your efforts into on-premises environments just doesn't make sense. The volume is just going to keep growing. Data is the fuel for your machine learning models that have become so critical to threat detection. And these models need both more signals and more diverse signals to work. To shore up your defenses, enterprises have deployed dozens of security products. Each of these products producing large volumes of alerts. Now in isolation, these may have high false positive rates and poorer response prioritization, which results in lots of alert noise, deafening in fact. As a result, a lot of organizations report that nearly half of alerts are never investigated. The cloud can help manage this complexity. Simplifying and making security easy to manage, harnessing the power of cloud will set your security ops team free to carry on with their normal daily work. Azure Sentinel is a cloud-native SIEM system. You get to choose from hundreds of built-in dashboards, queries for hunting, analytics, playbox, and lots more. It enables you to collect and store your data and analyze all of your security information using cloud scale and cloud economics. It scales automatically as your volume and compute needs grows, and there's no infrastructure costs, no upfront commitment. You pay for the data you use and the data you analyze. Sentinel delivers end-to-end -end solution for security ops. From the visibility, through the detection, analytics and hunting, automatic investigation and response and automation. Let's work our way through this chain of events. Let's look at visibility first of all. You get one-click integration with all of Microsoft's solutions. Your data connectors for growing list of third-party technologies, both on-premises and across different clouds. It's got support for standard log formats. So Ceph, the common event format, Syslog and WEF. Specialized threat connectors for Graph and Taxi. And it has a REST API for connecting to your cloud solutions. More than 10 petabytes of da daily data ingestion into this analytics platform. You also get to choose from a number of interactive dashboards that help you see the threats in your environment. Different kinds of visualizations, graphs, maps, charts, whichever you want, helping you to get gain deep insights into either a single data source or multiple data sources proving to be a threat. It's powered by KQL, Custo Query Language, and these queries, which are the same queries that run your log analytics workspaces, make your workbooks easy to build and easy to customize. Let's look at analytics. You can leverage all your analytics to detect these threats. There are over a hundred built-in rules developed by Microsoft and other community experts. There's a wizard to enable you to create your own rules using KQL queries. You can set thresholds to set 
alerts when activity levels exceed what you consider to be your normal patterns. And you can have correlation events of events with your threat intelligence and with Microsoft intelligence about malicious URLs. So you can grab URLs early. Microsoft has an unparalleled view of this threat landscape. And you can now match your Microsoft URL threat intelligence with your network logs to make sure you're safe. And alerts can be used to trigger your automated playbooks for remediating these threats. Obviously, this uses machine learning in the background and Microsoft's, the benefits of Microsoft's machine learning excellence with no complexity. Proven off-the-shelf machine learning models for identifying this suspicious behavior and suspicious logins across all of Microsoft's identity services. So it'll discover malicious SSH accesses, RDP, and it takes transferred learning from other machine learning models. Sentinel can then use those to detect different anomalies from one data set with a high level of accuracy. Microsoft also uses a technique called Fusion, a machine learning technique, to connect data from multiple sources, such as Azure AD, looking at anomalous logins and suspicious activities in Microsoft 365. This helps detect over 35 different threats that span different points on the kill chain. So this chart here you can see is based on a real life example that shows how Azure Sentinel machine learning models can analyze billions of signals and highlight a small number of high severity threats, which allows you to drill down straight into those, call them incidents and start managing them. You can also go hunting. So there are built-in threat hunting queries developed by Microsoft and other community experts to help you hunt for threats you haven't detected. You can run these threat hunting queries, see the results. You don't need the query experience or the ability to write KQL because it's built in for you. If you have that experience or the knowledge, you can write your own threat hunting queries that are specific and unique to your own environment. As soon as you've run the query, it generates alerts or it generates um, data, and you can start investigations straight from those hunting queries. You can bookmark them, so you can bookmarks to flag notable data, and you can go back and examine that later. And you can annotate these book, this bookmark data in a graph for investigation. If you use Azure Jupyter Notebooks, you can launch these directly from Sentinel makes it easy to create and execute your notebooks and analyze your data. They combine live code, graphics, visualizations, and texts, making them a really useful tool for threat hunters. There is a gallery of built-in notebooks for you, all developed by Microsoft security experts, or you can import others from GitHub to help you get started and learn about Jupyter Notebooks. They're the same professional hunting solutions that Microsoft's own threat hunters use every day on their own network. These are hosted in the Azure cloud. They're accessible anytime, anywhere. You can save this investigation workflow and share it as either HTML or JSON. And you can query all your Azure Sentinel data directly in the notebook. You don't have to step out to log analytics to carry out the queries. And it allows you to bring external data sources such as threat intelligence into these investigations. It also supports Python, SQL, KQL, R, and other languages if they're your preference. Having done all this hunting, we're gonna end up with some incidents, and incidents contain data. You can use these incidents to collect all the alerts, events, and bookmarks, and start investigating an incident. You can assign the incident to somebody, you can manage and track the status, you can tag them, you can comment on them, and you can pass out to uh, service management solutions as well. Also from the incident, you can generate and trigger automated playbooks. So this incident is a container for alerts, events, and bookmarks related to one particular security threat. They're automatically created from these alerts, or you can initiate them yourself as a security analyst when you're carrying out your threat hunting.
you can visualize in your investigations from your incidents the attack where it comes from where it's going any other similar attacks and you can navigate through all the relationships across different data sources different entities different alerts and different sources of data you can expand the scope using these exploration queries as well and you can see a timeline if this a graphical map doesn't work for you, you can see a timeline of all the related alerts, events and bookmarks. If you click on any node in your investigation, you can see detailed in information about where they've come from, what IP addresses, any other alerts that are related to these entities and much more. And we'll look at those in a demonstration shortly. It gives you deep insights into all the related entities, users, domains and everything else you're examining in this investigation. You can also get deeper insight with automated detonation. So you can automatically detonate these URLs, which speeds up your investigation. So you can use this detonation tool to enrich your alerts and discover threats related to malicious URLs. So when creating a scheduled alert, any URL data in the query can be mapped to a new URL entity type. Whenever an alert containing a URL entity is generated, the mapped URL will automatically be detonated and the investigation graph will be immediately enriched with the detonation results. You'll get the verdict, you'll get a final URL and a screenshot, which is really useful if you're investigating phishing attacks and you can use these to quickly assess the threat. You have to enable URL logging, so threat logging, to use this feature. And if you've got secure web gateways, web proxies, firewalls, or any legacy IDS or IPS solutions, you need to enable threat logging in there. Having carried out your investigation, you can then automate your actions and orchestrate your operations using logic apps. So these playbooks contain logic apps and they're powered by the Azure logic apps and they're integrated deeply into Azure Sentinel. So you can build these automated scalable playbooks that integrate across all of your tools because it works all the way across Azure. There's a library of many samples or you can create your own and there are over 200 connectors and there are generic connectors for things like HTTPS as well. You can trigger one of these playbooks from either an alert or an incident investigation. Some example playbooks might be uh, incident management to assign an incident to an analyst, open tickets, keep the incident status in synchronization or post something in Teams or Slack. You can also do uh, geographic lookup for IPs, you can do remediation by blocking IPs. The world's your oyster really for what you can do in your playbooks. Let's go and have a look at a demonstration. Azure Sentinel is accessible from the Azure portal at portal.azure.com. If it doesn't appear in your Azure services and you haven't already created an Azure Sentinel workspace, then you can just type Sentinel in the top screen and it'll take you to Azure Sentinel. To use Azure Sentinel, you require a log analytics workspace. I have two here. I'm going to use the hybrid demo log analytics workspace. You need to create one of these. The charges for these are based on queries performed and data stored and retained. So I'm going to select my hybrid demo. And you can see, if I make this a little larger, that we have a number of events. And in fact, over the last 24 hours, I've got over 519,000 events, which is up nearly 8,000 on the day before. I've got no alerts at the moment, which is down 22 on the day before. And I have four incidents, which is down five. I can look at a wider period. So if I look at the last 30 days, I've got 534 incidents down from 201. I still have no alerts down from 22. It gives me a status on my incidents, whether they're new, active, etc., And it gives me uh, events and alerts over time. 
and what type of alert and event they are and where they come from. Should I have any malicious events, they would appear geographically mapped on my map and it will tell me whether they are inbound or outbound. I also get a recording of my data source anomalies. So here we've got um, my Azure Active Directory domain services and it's telling me I've got some anomalies in there and I've got some anomalies in the security incidents as well, which I could drill down to and go and look at those in the query and it would tell me what they are. Remember that everything in Azure Sentinel is built on the workspace and the workspace uses Custo query language to produce its information. Let's have a look at the incidents that we do have. So here you can see I've got 534 open incidents. They're all medium. And I've got a number of different types of incidents here. I've got suspicious authentication. I've got rare audit activity. And these are all generated from a number of uh, data connectors and queries and threat analytics that is built into the background of Azure Sentinel. I'm going to look at this suspicious activity, suspicious authentication activity. If I select this incident, which is generated from one or more alerts, you can see it brings it up on the right hand side of the screen. I can see I haven't assigned it to anybody, so I can go and assign that to me to deal with. So that then now becomes my incident. I can change its status to active from new, and I can change its status in terms of severity if I want to. It also tells me if there are any events that have caused this, how many alerts raised it. So there were no events, but there was an alert that was raised and it hasn't come from a bookmark. It also tells me it's come from a specific machine and a host name. And whether it's a tactic on a pre-known or a known set of information. So this is a pre-attack. If I go to investigate, it opens the investigation pane. And it says here, I've got suspicious authentication activity, and it's telling me that none of this authentication activity succeeded. It does look like a dictionary attack, and it's somebody trying to attack a host on my network. It's actually in the cloud. And it's known as a virtual machine, login, brute force, valid user, failed. So a user is trying to sign in with the wrong password lots and lots and lots of times. If I had playbooks to beat this, I could view my playbooks and start carrying out remediation actions. If I look at the host, I've got 181 related alerts on this host. So people are trying to attack this an awful lot. It tells me I've got some processes running on the host and any events that may be based on that. So it says I have um, a client of some sort running on this host, which I might need to go and have a look at. It'll also give me information on if it's been logged into accounts or accounts have logged into it, any bookmarks, any services that have been created, all the areas you might want to look at on a suspicious host. Let's go back to a different incident and look at rare audit activity. So this one has been generated by 14 events and I've got a number of different entities here. If I click investigate, you can see that the rare audit activity is happening in lots of different places. So there are more than one uh, set of incidents and alerts on this. So I've got more incidents and I've got my five entities. If I look at cloud admin, well, this is actually me uh, as the administrator here. And there are 621 alerts related to this user. And there are some office activity IPs for this. If I was to click on that, it would take me to that IP address and then I can see what's happening with that IP address and it'll tell me if there's any 
um, information I need to know about that. So it'll also tell me which accounts have used this IP address. If I click on that, it will open up even further and I can see that these a sync user and me from this IP address. I go to my other IP address here. I've got no other accounts. I've got some alerts, but no other information on that IP address. Have a look at this one. Nothing in there either. Which devices? 24 devices alerts. And then I have a hybrid client, which is a virtual machine, which there are 24 on there as well. And I can scroll through and see all of those alerts. So all the rare audit activity is coming from this one client and one account. And I can see all 23 entities that are being carried out. I can then drill down into a specific audit activity and it'll tell me what the activity is. When it happened, where it happened from, and which product has raised the alert. So it's a very detailed investigation uh, pane. I can scroll it down so I can see my whole investigation. I can look at the timeline of it instead so I can see when it happened which entities are related to which of my uh, audits. So these are a day and an hour apart. So it could be automated. If I look at workbooks, there are a number of workbook templates built into it, Sentinel. So there are 72 here. I have used some of them. So I've got security status and insecure protocols, Azure activity, Microsoft 365 activity. There are lots and lots of um, workbooks. If I look at the ones I've got here, I could go and look at my Exchange Online, view the workbook. And the workbook is just a number of queries with the output spread across the page. So I can go down here and I can say all activities. I want to see everything happening with Exchange Online. It'll then run the queries and it'll tell me everything that's going on with my Exchange Online. So set conditional access policies, setting mailboxes. If there's any strange configuration changes, I would see them. It tells me who has done what and how many operations are being carried out. And whether it's trending up or down. I have no admin activities being carried out, which is refreshing. If I go back to another one, and look at my Office 365 activity on another workbook. Look at all the workloads and all the user types. We're able to see what's happening in my Office 365 in terms of activity by workloads, any updates, creates, adds and deletes, which I'm interested in. changes to files, changes to folders, and then the recent activity that's happened. Also gives me the user activity and analysis of SharePoint and OneDrive. You can build your own workspace, uh, workbooks and you can change workbooks that exist. So I could edit it, amend the query, amend the type of chart I'm looking at if I want to. So we've got Incidents, workbooks. I can add new connectors. And there are a number of connectors. I've only chosen 12 here. So I've got Office 365 and Azure and others, but I can do AWS. I can do Google Cloud Platform. Lots of um, firewall manufacturers are in here as well. So I can connect to all that data and I can configure the analytics I'm going to carry out as well. So here I've got a number of rules that are being run on all of the data that's connected and it will tell me and raise alerts and create incidents based on these things. So you can see I've got rare RDP connections, I've got anomalous sign-ins, it'll show me the query, tell me when it's run and tell me what happens 
um, if there is more than zero results or what I'm going to run based on this query. Got some high level ones here, so advanced multi-stage attack. It will explain what's being done here, that it's using fusion technology to detect this attack. You have to be able to connect your, multi your cloud app security and your Azure Active Directory identity protection, which means you need Azure Active Directory P2 and EMS E5 or Microsoft 365 E5 to get these products. And it will help you to challenge all of these types of attack lateral movement, exfiltration, command and control, etc. Playbooks, playbooks are logic apps. So I can go and create a logic app, add it as a playbook. So if an account does activity A, I can carry out activity B on that account. And at the fundamental level, I can go deep dive straight into the logs themselves and carry out hit queries on the data directly. So I can go to my Sentinel and I can say device events and add fields into my query. I can go to example queries. I don't think there's any Sentinel queries in here, but all the data in here I can pull out. So if I want to do queries on virtual machines, VM availability, it'll tell me what, what VMs are available and when they were available and how often the heartbeat happened over a particular period of time. So I can drive my activities into the data as well as looking at what Azure Sentinel brings out for me. That's just a short overview of Azure Sentinel. So you can see from the presentation before and the demonstration just how useful and powerful Azure Sentinel is to protect your expanded estate, all those different sources of data in your environment. Thank you for watching this presentation on modernizing your security operations with Azure Sentinel. I'd like to thank all the backroom staff of Azure Back to School for putting this project on and look forward to talking to you again in the future.